Hey everybody, and welcome to Shit We Like, a podcast with me and Armor Hyde, and maybe guests, depending on if people want to join or not. Uh, today we'll be talking about uh, Digimon 2020, the remake of the 90s show, uh, episodes 3 and 4. And boy, are these uh, not just as good as the first two. Yep. You know what? I'll put them on par. Uh, but yeah, like I said today, I have Armor Hide in with me today. Why am I doing hand gestures? You can't see me. Don't have the webcam on. Um, but uh, yeah. Let's just get into the first part of episode three, which I actually genuinely thought that episode three was going to be a flash forward of them being Omega Mon. And it just ended up being actually Omega Mon fight. How weird is that? Hello. Hello. That's our well, I kind of get it. Because on one hand, they want to hype people up by showing them Omega Mon for old fans who love Omega Mon and new fans who don't know what's going on, but be like, what's that? Why did they turn to that? I need to find out more. Or maybe it's all a marketing scheme to promote the card game that the setting that includes the Mega Man as a super rare just happened to come out at about the same time this episode did. Yeah. It's weird. Marketing, man. It it's it's really it's 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 weird because if you think about like the like the episode as a whole, the, the Omega Mon fight only lasted about like what, like five minutes? Beautifully animated fight, though. Yeah, but, the the fight itself was actually really cool, and it'd be really cool just to have a clip of that fight. Yeah, if if I wouldn't get a copyright strike, I'd play it right now. But the uh, it, it it's just it 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 doesn't really make any sense in the fight like you in the fight you see ty and tk on no ty and matt ty and matt sorry tk is the little brother ty and matt on the on their on omega man's shoulders like actually fighting with them but like it, it it really gives you a sense of scale of how big these these things are because like if you think about it, like when they're when they're when they're baby form, they're about hip size. Like, you know, just above the hip, maybe a little bit lower, depending on the Digimon itself. Like you know, like uh Poyomon is a little bit lower than than Sora's hip. And then yeah, spoiler alert, the next episode has Sora in it. And then you have what? Yeah, I know, right? But then you have like you have like you know, Agumon, which is like almost nipple level to tie. So, yeah, I don't know. I the other like the fight was really good, but like, yeah, the sense of scale of how big Omegamon is is so it's so un characteristic of what Digimon was because you see them, you see him form. And you you see them standing next to Omega Mon, but then all of a sudden they're on his shoulders. So did they shrink? <laughs> because like in episode two, you see Omega Mon form, and it's not as big as it is during the fight. But then during the fight, they're on his shoulders, like sitting on a sh on the collarbone, like standing on the collarbone. Man, time and space is all just bendable and warpable for dramatic effect. So, yeah, it's just okay. But I, and the fight was great. Like the fight itself was amazing. I really did enjoy it. The ending was very good. There was a, a a massive like, really cool animated scene when a bunch of like eyeballs open up around Omega Mon and like start firing lasers into Omega Mon. Omega Mon's just like get the fuck out of here. And, like wipes his hand over it. That wasn't in, meant to be copied from the Diabormon fight from the first movie. I mean, I think it is. Yeah, I think it's literally just a copy of that. But 
yeah. a really well done one though. I mean, they like I said when you like I said during while we were watching it, um, when you have unlimited budget, anything is possible. Like you literally have unlimited budget, so it's like make a Digimon, make a Digimon fight. They're like, okay, well then I guess I'll hire the guy who does My Hero Academia. You know, it's like, what else is there that you could do? And then so, oh. so okay, I I, say, they could have hired better writers, but I think the writing is just we need to get from one fight to the other. We don't need to work that hard. Well, I mean, the writing after the fight was pretty okay, except for Kari being a fucking nightmare. But we'll get into that in a second, because uh, we have uh, some bullshit. Because after they fi fight and beat the Digimon, I can't remember the Digimon's name. Uh, Armor Hide might know it. Uh, no, I don't, because this is a new Digimon made up for uh, this show. All right, I'm going to call him uh, Idramon, because he has eyes. Not Diaboramon. <laughs> yeah, not Diaboramon. Uh, and then so they they he like pulls up the sword, cuts him into fucking ribbons, kills him, and then we also find out that of course nukes have fucking computers in them, and the nuke that is going to destroy the city is still going to destroy the city. So what do they do? They use the power of their minds. To destroy the rocket. No, and they don't destroy the rocket. They use Omega Mount Sword to stab a screen, which hack somehow hacks the rocket to make it do a complete 180 fight gravity and put itself up into the atmosphere. Yes. Yes. And it... Yeah, weird. And then it explodes, causing a massive EMP, which would destroy everything around the city. And instead of it, instead of it being like an actual like nuke going off and you know an EMP going off, all their computers and everything starts turning off, and it shows uh, someone sitting in life support in a hospital, and the lights go out, and I just went, "Oh, that person's dead! Oh, that person's dead!" And it's just life insurance plan. Yeah. Don't worry, Grandma. I will never let you go. Be. <laughs> oh, I am. I am saddened now. And then, uh, yeah. And then, so this it, the nuke goes off, and it's like a big time explosion right over Japan. And then, Omega Mon like wraps its cloak around it in the digital world which wraps its cloak around the nuke in the real world launching and also launching the nuke into space where i immediately yelled where i where i immediately yelled fuck you international space station <laughs> so yeah, that was... Uh, okay, the International Space Station happened to be on the other side of the planet during this day. Yeah. Um, and then, so, there was, like, this... Like, yeah, so it goes up into space, and it shows a picture of Agumon, like, fading away into light. And I was like, well, shit, they just killed off Agumon. And then, of course, like, they go back to the real world... And they talk about it for, like, they talk about it of what happened and everything. And, like, everyone's computers are turned off and everything. And then, like, it cuts to, like, I, I'm going to say, like, an hour later. And everything is fine. And yeah, I... First I, rule of technology. Turn it off, turn it back on again. It works fine. But it was an EMP. Yeah, just reboot after the EMP. That's how it works. <laughs> I don't that's think all that's... the EMP is, is a hard reboot. That's not how technology works. It does in anime land. 
I guess, yeah. Um, they go back to uh, Ty goes. Ty goes back to his uh, apartment with Izzy. I can't remember his name in Japanese. Uh, to- Toshido. I think it's Toshido. I thought it started with a K. I may begin that wrong though. I thought it started with a K. Toshido. Something like that. No. No, no. He starts with a T. Does he? Okay. Yeah. Let me use the magic of the interwebs and I can find out. Yeah, you do that. Uh, and then he gets back to his apartment and opens the door. And his sister's like, Ty, Ty Chan, thank you. And I'm just like, oh, how Ty, do you? Uh, Onisan. Yeah, Onisan, oh, thank you. And I'm just like, oh, God, she knows. <laughs> oh, no, you had it right. It does start with K. It's Koshido. Koshido. Yeah, I thought so. I knew it started with a K. Yeah, uh, Koshido Izumi is his Japanese name. And then I can't remember what happened right after that. Because all I can uh, remember is just Kari sitting in a dark room and looking. The last, the next thing I remember is Kari sitting in a dark room just like staring at Taig. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, oh, this thank is. Thank you, Oni-chan. Yeah, it's like, thank you. You're going to die. <laughs> you will give us head pats. And then, of course, again, for, I guess, the symbolism of it, you see the fe- uh, the feather, the white feather of Angel Woman behind her. And I'm just like, you know, they're really hitting home on this, uh, on this, uh, Angel Woman and Angel Mon fight. That's going to be happening. Kari's an angel. You get it yet? We're going to yeah. tell you again in the next episode. Yeah. Just in case you forgot. And then they go to the digital world because the power starts going oh, out because no. another Digimon appears and the power you starts going out. Oh, did I? They do end up going to the camp and the anime oh. tricking you into thinking, oh, yeah, they're, this is going to be where they all meet and they all get sucked into the digital world at once. Nope, they go to the camp for five seconds, you see Joe in a frame, and then they introduce Sora, and then they go back home from the camp perfectly fine. I was hoping that there was going to be a, like, tidal wave like it was in the original that sucks them into the digital world. But no. Yeah, they they go to the camp, Uh, he talks with Sora for, like, five minutes, and he... Goes home, and it's so bizarrely stupid that they have this scene where they show Joe being just a fucking, like, an imaginable cunt for, like, no reason. Like, you're not following the rules. You're an asshole. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, you need to stop. Well, I'm kind of that way at my real-life job where I'll see someone... Instead of using a ladder to get a piece of furniture from a high shelf, they'll use one of those flat carts to use to haul furniture around a grocery store. And Ugh. just climb up on that. And I'll yell at them for it. Like, use, yeah, use a ladder. I used to work at a construction company. I get that. Be like, nah, it's fine. I'm just going to be up here real quick. I'm like, and that's how you die. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's literally how you die. <laughs> it's like that video of the guy who was found like 20 years later behind the behind the fridges at a Walmart because he went up, climbed up on the top of a fridge, fell behind the freezers and just died there because the freezers are so loud. No one can hear him yell. went missing no one thought to go looking around the walmart yeah uh um yeah so they go to that they 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 finally the power goes out like a new a new egg did uh, you see like this giant orb and another digimon comes out and it's like a kind of like a moth i guess like it looks like a moth and it it looked like a demon from Devil Man. Yeah, it, it was weird. Like it was like a weird moth with eyes on the wings. 
and it looks it looks pretty cool. Like it was a white moth and black eyes. And uh, then the power starts going out, and Izzy is like s- freaking out. Like the power's out, power's out. It'll be a complete blackout in seventy two hours. And I just was like, Has Japan never had a blackout before? Is it like now it's just a full panic mode? Like as soon as the power goes out, they're gonna have a fucking they're gonna have a stroke. Everyone's gonna be panic buying toilet paper. Yeah. I don't get it. It's weird. Uh, and then you have, like that. Yeah. So they go. They they go to the digital. World. They don't show them going to the digital. World. They just appear there. Like the Digivice, like sucks them into the Digivice. You know, like in the di- in the Digimon, even season one or season two, when they went to the digital world, they show the transition. But instead, they just show like a like the Digivice glows. It surrounds them. And then they get transported, and you see three lights or four lights. I can't. I don't remember appearing. You see like, a group of lights traveling through the internet. Yeah, traveling through the internet, and then poof, they're in the digital world, and that's their transition. No awesome rock theme song. I'm going digital. Nothing. So, well, to be fair, we we don't necessarily need to have the I'm going digital song. But come on. They're going digital. <laughs> uh, then you see a bunch of Digimon that are there, like a bunch of like um, what are they called there? Uh, Stegomon and Brachimon. Yeah, Stegomon and Bra- and Brachimon. And it was it's just weird, I guess, like to see like these these Pokemon like running around, like. Running it around, would be real weird to see Pokemon running around there. Like, it would but be like, hilarious. But like running around, like they they don't care. Like if someone just appeared out of nowhere, a human. Imagine like it's like kind of like in Minecraft where you just appear in this world, right? And it's like, and none of the animals or anything are scared. <laughs> oh. To be fair, in the digital world, they would have humanoid Digimon just, like, teleport in. So it's probably not that unusual for them. That's true. That is very true. Or and they're, then, like, low intelligent Digimon that just don't care. And Sora shows up. No, Agumon shows up. And he's just like, Tai Chi, how you doing? I'm here now. Welcome to the digital world. Yeah, and in these... Credits. Yeah, and then credits, and then uh, the next episode starts literally right at that point, and Sora comes out of the bushes, and she has, like, a big bag on, she has a big bag, and it's like, complaining that her phone doesn't work, that she's asking, she's asking if they're overseas. If they somehow unknowingly got on a plane and went to a different continent. And I just yelled, yeah, okay, yep, they're overseas. They're, now we're in Australia. No, nah, man, it's the uh, nature reserves for the dinosaurs over in central Canada. Don't you know? F- fucking eh? Sora is thicker than oatmeal. Anyway, it was... Thicker re- than Dexter's mom? Yeah. It's a, and, oh, wait, we missed out the best part. So at the camp, Izzy trips and like about to throw his laptop into the ground and she catches it by the corner of the laptop with one hand two fingers and a thumb and just hands it back to him. i'm like holy fuck that's like a 30 pound laptop you're built like a shit bread house and then they look at her arms and they're no thicker than a churro when they rolled her character they got like a 20 in strength and four in intelligence Hello? Sorry, uh, I I keep getting PMs and I keep having to answer them. Oh, okay. But I'm here now. I'm sure I didn't lose my connection. No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, the And then they go to, like, this rock, right? And they see, like, a rock and the, the, the rock is written in code. Just like it was, like, the code that was in the original where Izzy had to translate it. Remember when there was like a code and he wiped his finger off it and the power went out? 
Yeah, that's actually a legit full-on language you could go translate yourself. Okay, now I gotta go find out what that says, because I never even knew that. That would yeah, be cool. It, it, um, I think it translates to, like, the Romanization, or Romanization, nah. Words, I can use them. Can you? Where it's Japanese written in English characters, and then each of those Digimon symbols is a different English character, but it's still written in Japanese, but I could be misremembering that part. I, I, I'll take your word for it. Because I'd have no idea. And uh, the Digivice gives him the ability to, like, read it. But, like, in, like, this weird, like, Google Translate way. Where it, it kind of gives you the gist, but it's not exact. So you can't use it com as a one-for-one -one meaning. Yeah. It was weird. And uh, also, all I kept screaming was, "Can we give T Can we give Ty a knife? Ty is gonna have a knife at one point, and he's gonna stab a Digimon, and it's gonna be great." Dude, I want to see that Ty with like a buckler and a sword sword fighting alongside Agumon. Yeah, dude, that'd be amazing. Or we get a Digimon. What's that Digimon season four mode where they fuse? No, that was uh, three where they would bio merge to form the. No, it was. Mega forms. No, it's definitely season four. Where are oh, you talking about when they used the spirits and the kids? Would yeah, yeah, that them? one. Yeah, when they like ran their hands across the top of the Digivice, and they would yeah. transform. Yeah. Spirit evolution. Yeah, spirit evolution. Oh, yeah. Yes. To anyone listening to this, season four is not a bad season. Fight me. I mean, it's not a good season either. Well, it's not going to be as good as Tamers, no. But it wasn't a bad season. Yeah. Um. Okay, so what happens right after that? So they 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 oh yeah they're walking through yeah they he asks like how it works and the device like explodes with a with a bolt of light telling them where to go and it's like miles away all the way to Pride Mountain. Yes, that'll come oh. up later. Wait, no, it's Pride Rock. That's where they're going. Yeah. And that's where they're going to find Leomon just before the Ox Stampede. No, yeah. They're going to find Leomon, then he dies. In a wildebeest stampede or yeah. whatever it was. Fucking Leomon. Can we have one season where Leomon doesn't die, please? Yeah, Dad Gunder. Oh, well, okay. Fine. Can we have one good season where he doesn't die? Well, Dad Gunder's not even Digimon. It was a mech anime, but had. All the Digimon cast. So the guy who play always plays Leomon played a lion robot. Oh, okay. That's funny. I that's the like... one season where he didn't die, as far as I know. Um. And then they, yeah, then Sora and uh, Sora and crew start going through the woods. And this is when we meet Poyomon, who is running away from a legitimate Pokemon. Scyther. No, no he's totally different. He's a darker green, and he has, like, cybernetic pipes on his back. I can't remember that Digimon's name. Sneemon. Sneemon, okay. So Sneemon is looking for a snack, basically. And, again, with the weird growth of Digimon... Because in what the scene that they're that that Poyamon's running away from from Sneemon, they're almost like double. He's almost double the height, almost like maybe a little bit shorter of Poyamon, like a little bit taller, and he's about Ty's height, just flying a little bit. Because Ty grabs a stick and starts beating the shit out of him, right? And you know. Doesn't fucking work because it's a stick against a scyther. I mean, Sneemon. Yeah, and you know the stick gets destroyed, and it 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 just gets like stupid, weird because then they start they run away. Car, uh, uh, Kari, no Sora, grabs <laughs> grabs Poyamon and starts running away, 
And then they get to the cliff. And they jump off the cliff. And then you hear, like, Poimon having an orgasm. Like, it's really weird. Because she's just, like, making, like, these weird noises as yeah, they're falling. It's terrifying. I guess. But she, like, had she's a... going to be eaten by the big bug man and then found this squishy human. <laughs> and now has to rely on the squishy human. And then, so they fall off and they get in, they fall in the water. It, um, uh, Sneemon runs away. Can't find them. They wash up on shore. And then we find out that the bag that Sora has has all of the equipment that makes them their costumes. Like, I don't remember Sora having a helmet. Like, it was a helmet. But in, like, the original, it was, like, a toque. Wasn't it? No, it was a harder hat in the original, because they've used it to, like, put stuff in. But I swear it was a toque. Like, I swear it was, like... Because it has, like... She doesn't buckle it. It just has strings that drop down. Also, if you don't know what a toque is, it's um, the Ameri American term for a beanie. But, like, it has, like, the pom-pom over on top of it, and it, like, covers the whole head. It, look it up. T-O-U-K. T-O-U-Q-U-E, if you are interested. Is that interested. what they're called? I just call them hats with the pom-pom thing on them. And it, it's a French word for... It's a French word called toque. T-O-U-Q-U-E. Toque. Um... So Ty gets his goggles. Uh, she gets her hat. Ty gets a fucking knife. Right. Ty gets a knife. This is this is going to be... She does some Minecraft stuff. Yeah. But I'm like, Ty has a knife. This better come up later where he fucking cuts a Digimon's arm off. Because Ty gets a knife. Motherfucker. No, yeah. Ty gets a fucking knife. I'll just stab a Vegemon in his tentacleness. Oh my god! I want I want him to just get, pull like full on get a stick and tie the knife to the stick and make a spear. <laughs> but it's one of those little wood saws, so it's not really good for stabbing. So he would just flip it out like a switchblade and like just go into the ribs. Yeah, like just like cut an arm off. I mean, he just sideswipes into the ribs. And then just digs deeper as he pulls it out, and then their guts will just go everywhere. Yeah, that sounds about right. Have to take Let's the show off the air. Can, can we have a Digimon Zero, please? Let's like Yu-Gi-Oh Zero. <laughs> that that would be great. The Digimon are actually eaten. Yeah, Digimon are actually eaten. And uh, so he makes a raft out of the rope that we saw before. So we 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 established that she had a bunch of climbing gear, water bottles, everything ready to go. Like in this in this kit that she had for some reason that she was walking around with. Oh no, because she was going to the store for the school, and I guess the school needed this stuff. I don't know. It was stupid. Maybe she's part of some like outdoor survival club. Isn't she like fucking like thirteen? Who gives a thirteen year old a fucking knife? Responsible people who teach their children responsibility. I. It doesn't matter. Don't give a kid a knife. If I give the most responsible person ever a knife, they're gonna do something with it. Yeah, I was given my first knife at twelve. I still have that knife. So I give you a kid a gun. Yeah, I. I. Well, I didn't own it, but I got to handle those too. Ugh. I mean, you All live in a ski shoot targets. I'm like, you live in Alaska. You need to know how to use a gun so you can kill polar bears. Well, yeah, because they just show up into your garbage can <laughs> in the middle of the afternoon. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. That is a real thing that happens in town. It's yeah. mostly brown bears, though. Oh well, yeah, you'll go, you'll go outside to go take your dog out. Boom, bear. Yep. Yep, that's crazy. Uh, and then you have. So they, they have this raft and they're on the they're going down the river, the same river that they jumped down into. Um, they hit rapids. Uh, the um, the raft starts like turning, going crazy, 
And then a big rock shows up, and Agumon destroys this giant rock. And I, I immediately thought, why couldn't you use that strength against the Digimon that was threatening your partner? But, okay. Because Rock Smash works on rock types, but not bug types. You know, you're right. Except for rock types, except for bug types are weak to ground type. Rock Smash is a fighting move. Is it? I thought it was yes. a rock type. Oh. I'm stupid. So it's not very effective against bug types. No, it isn't. I'm stupid. Although... Does this mean Agumon is firefighting? Oh, God. <laughs> it's like every starter ever. And uh, then the... Um, Sly Scythermon shows up. And grabs uh, Poyamon in its mouth. And that's when I immediately had... No, wait, no. That, wait, 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 wait. Before that happens... They're uh, attacked by a fish. Yeah, they're attacked by... Koyamon? No. I can't remember right now. We talked Give about it. I'm going to dig my Digimon brain. You mean you're going to Google it? Same difference. I'm going into my mind's eye. I can't remember how to spell his name, but I know he digivolves from Crabmon. So if I just find Crabmon's article and go to Digivolves 2... There you go. Uh, I want to say Colamon. Yeah, I was... But I... <sighs> It was weird. They they actually said it in the show, too. Yeah, here. I'll just pass you the link so you can look at it. Yeah, put it in the podcast notes. Uh, Yeah, they start fighting it. And it, like, destroys their... Uh, Koi... Ko Koilamon? The Kana reads, um, Shidumon is the way the Kana reads. Weird. Anyway, yeah. Um, it fights him. Also, he, his previous form is a crab, and that makes total sense. Yeah. It destroys the, it destroys the, um, the, um, uh, the raft. And... At the same time, Slight Scythermon grabs Poyamon in its mouth, and that's when I was like, okay, something's wrong. Because now it's huge. Yeah, so I think what happened, Koyamon showed up, knocked Agumon off the raft. Agumon digivolts to Greymon for the fight, and while they're fighting... Scythermon shows back up, destroying the raft in order to get to Beomon, and suddenly he's big enough to fit Beomon, most of her, in his mouth, and Sora can hang on to his leg without him noticing when he's trying to fly away with the food. Yeah, and doesn't kill the, the Digimon at all. Like, I was I expecting in a... I think where he can't eat food out in the open because it's too dangerous so he has to take all the food back to his lair. Or to, like, its kids or whatever. I was expecting, like, an attack on Titan fucking... It, lo it looks at Sora. Sora looks at it and goes, you be okay, chomp! And the head just rolls off. And uh, Sora just kind of snaps and kills him with the wood saw. Yeah. Just starts, like, just starts maliciously cutting arms off. Like, first cuts off the wings so it falls. And then, like, well, while... Well, she's riding it in midair. Yeah, just, just starts cutting it on the cutting down. the arms off and everything. It's, like, it's looking at him like, what the fuck? <laughs> she and then it, later just covered in bug gore. Yeah, it, 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 it would, like, two scyther claws. Like, yeah, I got swords now. <laughs> um... And then we have our first uh, stock battle. 
a uh, stock, stock evolution. Stock stock evolution, which looks like really weird because it kind of just looks like Agumon's getting fucked in the ass by a laser and then immediately turns it to Greymon. No, he's like channeling energy like he's gonna go super saiyan his head's going back and while this is all going on it's showing his two previous forms for some reason yeah and then once it shows botamon into koromon the koromon into agamon then he just kind of explodes into greymon it's visually interesting but doesn't make much sense i kind of like it of a animation sense yeah, visually, it's interesting and technical. It's kind of cool. But when you just break it down, it just kind of doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah, it really doesn't. It's kind of like this weird, like, amalgamation of, like, the first Digivolution when, like, you know, the laser... No, not the first one. The one when the laser goes through the Digimon. Oh, um... Are you talking about in the second season where they were Digi Armor? And you would see, like, the laser come out of the first... The out of the... Oh, uh, yeah, out of go the, through the Digivice? Yeah, that. Yeah. It's kind of like that one mixed with, like, a DNA Digivolve as well. Because it kind of has, like, that, that weird 3D look to it. To be honest, I think Season 5 had the best stock Digivolutions. Is that the one where, like, the, like, Digimon would fuse? So, like, you would have, like, level 7 Digimon? Or 7 uh, stars, or whatever they're called? If you're thinking of Crosswords, where they just turn all the Digimon into Mecha, no. Okay. Here, I, I will pull you up some reference material. Um. And then we have... Uh, they, they, he, like... She she gets out like she's like crying and everything, and Sora calms calms her down, and she gets out of the mouth, uh, and and then immediately ditch evolves into Bergeron, which is like a really cool like transformation, and just like before, except this one it makes sense. Sora is on Bergeron's foot and holding on. So, no magic here. Like, weirdly non-magical. Um, they, get, they chase around. They do meteor fire. It's a pretty lackluster fight, to be honest. I totally, like, missed the part where they did meteor fire because it was so quick. I looked away from my screen for two secs and then fight was over. Yeah, the fight wasn't that great. It was. It was basically the other Digimon was running away, and the and then Bergamon's like "fuck you," and like killed it anyway. You don't get to run away. There, I found at least one decent qual image quality. Oh, I made a mistake by opening it. Um, and then, and then the episode just ends, like, they go, and they're like, hey, is that where we need to go? Well, we can fly now, because we have a flying Digimon. Oh, yeah, we totally skipped over the conversation with Izzy over the Digivice before they made the raft, where we got to see Tentomon, our good boy. Oh, yeah. I completely forgot, because of how non- how lackluster that conversation was when it was just a conversation. I don't even remember what the conversation was about because we were making fun of how the holograms and the digivices work. Yeah, so they're holding the digivices like in Star Wars, where they hold the like they hold the communication device in the palm of their hand, and the, the hologram comes up. But like, where's the camera? Like. I don't understand because then, and in the same communication, Sora pushes Ty out of the way, and her hologram is now in the way 
while he is still holding the Digivice. And again, the Digivice does only do this sometimes. Every other time, it makes more sense because when, like, Ty's talking to Izzy, on his Digivice will be the crest of knowledge pulsing whenever Izzy talks. Yeah, and now it's just, like, now it's a hologram because I guess Izzy want, hasn't been on screen for more than five seconds, so we need to, like, jam pack him in it. His actor needs a paycheck, so we had to put him in at least one scene. Yeah. And then we see Tentamon, which is, like, my second favorite, like, Digimon. Uh, so, you know, there's that. And it's, it's pretty cool, because you get to see, like, in, in, in a later scene, you see Izzy and Tentamon flying. Like, Tentamon is, like, gripping Izzy's waist, and they're flying. Because he's a bug, and he has wings. And And they're not quite in the digital world yet. They're in the network. Yeah, they're in, like, the space between the digital world and the whatever. Like, they're not in the digital world. They were in the same area that Ty and Matt were fighting, is the way I look at it. Um, And it just ends with... Um, a picture of what I assume is the round table. Oh, the, um, no, it's, it's some kind of temple. And then the temple, you see some of their mega forms. Like I saw a vine covered Seraphimon when it panned around. I saw Phoenix Mon and I saw a funny Mon in there too, somewhere. Oh, so maybe I was wrong then. I think I, you're thinking of the Royal Knights, which could be some in, some extra characters that show up later. Yeah. Which I'd be okay with that, because the Royal Knights are cool. I thought that was the Royal Knights. I'm, I guess I'm just stupid. No, because the Royal Knights are consisted of all, like, vaguely knight-themed Digimon, like uh, Lord Knightmon and Gallatmon. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, and, and Xmon, because he makes total sense, because he's a giant multi-story tall dragon with a javelin. <laughs> oh, it's a javelin! That makes him nice enough, right? Yeah. Uh, and then just the episode just ends. And... It was just a, like a weird... Like, episode four. Like, it was just a weird middle episode. And I really think that if they're going to keep with this three-episode arc, like, every three episodes, an arc ends. Then episode five is going to be, like, the Izzy Digivolution episode? Maybe. Or instead of him getting his evolution next, they're going to introduce Joe and Mimi, and one of them will get it. I would love to see Mimi, but, like, in America. Like, she's actually, like, in America. She gets sucked into the digital world from America. Like, they show, like, New York or something. And then she's just trapped in the digital world. In an, in a country that doesn't speak her language. You know what I mean? Uh, everyone speaks Japanese. and Yeah. She's gonna speak. She's or gonna maybe sh- she knows Japanese. She just knows poor Japanese. Yeah, like she knows like 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 or or Digivice Google Translate. Yeah, well, you know, I worked in Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so yeah, that's it for episode three and four. And uh, stay tuned after the recording. For uh, a Q and A, if you have any questions, we can answer them. I will a your Q. And if you are watching this on YouTube, you can go to twitch.tv slash that overkill guy and twitch.tv slash armorhide ak. I will post those links in the description below, of course, to uh, follow us on our Twitch channels. Armorhide streams very occasionally. He streams a lot of 
uh, he's been what well, you've been streaming a lot of uh, Path of Exile, right? Uh, I did that once, but I'm having some technical issues with the game. I've been streaming the game 20XX more. Right, you did do 20XX, right? Yeah, that game looks like fucking fun. If I if you got it on PC, I would absolutely have played it with you because I own it as well. Oh, I have both PC and Switch accounts. So we I should. Love uh, this game. I will buy it multiple times. We, we should co-stream then. We should co-stream that. So don't forget to follow us on uh, Twitch.tv slash that overkill guy and Twitch.tv slash armorhide. That is A R M O R H I D E A K. All one word, no spaces. And uh, give us both a follow. Uh, and for now, I will talk to you all later. And if and and like I said, like if you go to the Twitch channels, we are uh, we're gonna try and make this weekly, but not. I don't know. Maybe bi-weekly. It depends on Armor Hide's days off because it doesn't work for my days off. But um, if you join the Discord server, uh, which there will be a link in the description as well, there's a podcast description a discussion section. And you can uh, suggest topics for the podcast there as well. And yeah, that's it. Thanks everyone for watching. And I will see you guys in the next podcast. Goodbye. Say goodbye, Armoride. Bye. I'll see you later.